what are different Wi-Fi standards? What is 802.11 A, B, G, N, A, C, A, X? You might have seen on the bottom of your router, of your home Wi-Fi router device that it supports G, it supports B and G especially. It is very common. It supports AC, which is Wi-Fi uh, 5, which is common these days. So what are these? These are different standards actually, which give us different data rates, which give us different frequency bands, frequency uh, calculations and all of that. So usually it started, how it started? So usually it started with 802.11, which came in 1997. So it was the initial standard and it gave us two megabits per second. And it was working on 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. We have two bands. We will be discussing a lot in this series, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, right? So these are two frequency bands which we can use. These are ISM bands. Every government, they allow us to use them in our home as a private network because we cannot have a, a wireless device and we can just generate any frequency. So we cannot use the spectrum easily, uh, like openly. So we need to get permission. But these bands, you don't get, you don't need to get permission. You can just buy a Wi-Fi router, install at home and you can cover your home area using the specified channel because some countries, they allow you to use all channels. Some countries, they don't allow you to use the channel number 12, 13, 14 of 2.4 gigahertz. But we'll discuss separately about frequency bands and channels in next in this series. So 802.11, it came in 1997. It gave a very small speed, but it was not enough. So they launched two new standards, uh, 802.11a and 802.11b. So A was working on uh, 5 gigahertz and B was working on 2.4 gigahertz. So A was giving us more speed, but it was not so stable. So people wanted to go with B standard and it became very famous. So after that, in 2003, we got a new standard 802.11G, which gave us same speed as previously. It didn't increase the speed, but it gave us more range. We could have our Wi-Fi up to 70 meter indoor and around 120, 130 meter, uh, even 140 sometime outdoor as well. So after that, there was another standard called Wi-Fi 4. It was 802.11N. So this last digit is important and the speed was increased from 54 megahertz from sorry from 54 megabits to 600 megabits from 2.6 gigabits and it supported both bands if somebody wants to use 2.4 gigahertz band they can use this one if somebody wants to use 5 gigahertz band they could use that one as well and the range was also extended indoor range was still 70 meter but outdoor range was extended to 250 meter. So then the time kept on passing and finally in 2013 we got a new standard 802.11 AC which was called as Wi-Fi 5. So it increased the speed exponentially. So it could give us with multi-user, with multi-input, multi-output, MIMO techniques and so many other uh, technical uh, details was relevant to that. It uses more higher frequency more higher not frequency it uses more higher modulation schemes as well and it could give us 6.9 gigabits per second gb per second right so after and it was on 5 gigahertz of course it did not support 2.5 that led us to the new standard which is wi-fi 6 or sometimes they say it's 6e as well so this is the current standard and very new devices are using wi-fi 6 so it supports 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz both bands. It can give us speed around 10G, around 10 gigabits per second or 9.6 uh, gigabits per second precisely. So then there are so many other details. We'll discuss about frequency bands and their channels. So this was all about standards. So we started with 802.11 legacy standard and today we are at 802.11. AX standard which can give us 9.6 GB which is called as Wi-Fi 6. So in interviews these days if they ask you about Wi-Fi standards we need to know a little bit history but mostly every company is these days selling or trying to sell Wi-Fi 6 based devices so this is where you should focus more if you want to get successful in the interviews. Thank you for watching.